Greetings and welcome back. In this video, we're going to improve upon the overall look of our terrain by adding in some detail meshes, specifically rocks. Though if you're creating your own area, this doesn't necessarily have to be rocks. You could just as easily add something like grass or even flowers or scattered debris or all kinds of things. The reason we're going to add rocks is really pretty much because there's an included rock. <laughs> That's what we have access to. So what I want you to do is over in your terrain uh, script area inside the inspector, click on the place details or paint details button. Now that it looks like a bunch of little tiny icon flowers and it's uh, also analogous to shift Y. So uh, you can bring that up that way. Now what we're going to do is come over here to edit details. We're going to skip all the brush stuff and come right down to the edit details button which is just like adding textures. Uh, it's just like adding trees which we saw earlier. We can choose to add grass or add a detail mesh. Now I don't want to get uh, too involved with a, a great big description, but there is a difference. A grass texture allows you to just bring in a texture, and that texture will be automatically dropped down onto little tiny cards that will be placed all across the ground as you paint. Uh, that way you can just have a picture of some grass with some transparency around it and give the illusion of grass as you paint these things down. What we're going to do instead is add a detail mesh, which is going to be an actual polygon model of a rock. So here's our Add Detail Mesh window. Uh, we're going to come under the Detail area and click the little tiny circle and dig through here, and there is a rock mesh. So we'll double click that and bring it in. I do want to throw this out uh, now so you're not curious later. These rocks will not stop the player. They can walk right through them just like they were holograms. Uh, later on, once we talk about adding in colliders uh, to block the player from hitting certain things, you'll know everything you need to know to drop down some uh, collision objects if, you was, if it was really important to make sure the player couldn't pass through that sort of thing. Right. This is a good tool for adding in lots of little rocks mm -hmm. where it's not actually going to be tall enough for the camera to pass through. Right. Now, we're going to break that rule a little bit, and we're going to add rocks uh, that will probably end up getting as big as large boulders. But for a visualization example, it actually works quite well. Uh, if you were going to build, say, like a, a real-time visualization of, you know, a park or a building or, or something like that, of course you could do this kind of thing and not worry about the collision. The only time collision is going to become a really important factor is if you know somebody's going to be playing this uh, because, you know, you lose that suspension of disbelief as soon as somebody can walk up to a great big boulder and just pass right through it. All right, now we're going to take our noise spread and we're actually going to boost this up a little bit, say to about 0.8. And I'll talk about what each one of these settings are, what they do uh, later on in a separate video specifically over the terrain system. For now, we're just take the settings pretty much as read. Uh, the random width and random height are going to control the overall size of the rocks as they come through. We're going to boost that to 5 in either dimension. Healthy and dry color is really just kind of a multiplier that uh, that will get added, but we're going to leave the render mode at vertex lit. I am going to go ahead and just set these over to like a color of gray for healthy and then a darker gray for dry. It's basically a color that applies to the tint of the actual color of the mesh that you're bringing in, or the material on the mesh that you're bringing in. Right. Now with that in, let's go ahead and click the Add button. So we now have a rock. It is added. Everything is good. Now let's zoom in and take a look at painting these down. So I'm going to come over here to where we have our little hot spring. And obviously, our brush is a little bit on the oversized side. So let's grab the brush size and bring that way down. And as I paint, you'll notice we get a lot of rocks. And part of the reason we're getting... Uh, quite so many rocks. I mean, some of it's going to be the opacity. As I pull down the opacity, we will get fewer rocks. Also, though, a lot of it comes back to our set resolution, and this is coming from our detail resolution. If you pull this down, you will get a wider spread of objects as you drop this down. The trade-off with it, and one of the downsides that you'll notice is if you bring that number down too low, all your trees and meshes start to line up like little soldiers in a row. Yeah, so it's just one of those things you, you play with and finally get to a point that you like. Now I'm going to kind of pull back on all these sliders and I'll boost up my brush size a little bit because I really I'd like to line the outside of the hot spring with a bunch of rocks. Again, I acknowledge the player will not be able to uh, to climb all over these, but that's okay. It gets the point across that this is kind of a, a broken up area. 
Now, you'll also notice as we get too far away, these do disappear. That's just how they work. It's an optimization feature, but that's okay for now. Now, my uh, something else, and this is kind of this comes back to basic navigation. You'll notice as I'm trying to rotate to you know kind of turn the camera around, I'm really swinging wide, and that can be a little bit of a pain. There is a way to work around that. If I hit the Q key, that gets us out of this terrain tool that we had and puts us back into just general selection mode so I can select things in the viewport. If I grab our camera here, which is actually part of our first person controller, or I could just as easily click it here inside the hierarchy view, I can tap the F key and frame up on it. And now my local pivot for the camera has been brought a lot closer, so it's easier to turn around. Now, I just spent a long time explaining something that I generally do, like without even thinking, and that's just grab anything visible in the viewport and tap F to frame up on it, just to kind of narrow down the camera's pivot if I find that I'm rotating from too far away. Now, let's see, we can probably come out here and we can add a few more rocks. So what I'm gonna do is select my terrain, and we'll hit Shift Y, and that will bring up our detail painting tool again. Now I'm going to bring down my opacity and bring down my target strength. And the brush size can be huge. And if I click, I can just put sort of a few idle rocks out here amongst the trees. Just to kind of give us the impression this is kind of a rocky area. And that was, that was a little bit too much. So we'll bring down the brush size a little. Click. Eh. Got some out there in the pathway. That doesn't look too bad. Another thing that'll help is mm -hmm. if you start using some of the other brushes that you've got with one of the brushes that are spread out, mm -hmm. that will also help give you a nice spread on your rock. That's true. That's true. Like something like these. We'll just start doing some really interesting things with placement. Now, I'm going to erase that one guy that's getting close to the path there and anybody that's kind of only partially poking through. In fact, let me make my brush really small so I can get selective erasure. And we'll push it back up. In fact, let's grab one of these kind of more wide out, scary looking brushes and see if we can start getting some much more generic placement. Now, right here where we're going to put this mine object, I'm going to just add a bunch of rocks. And then later on, once we come to add that in, I'll just remove the ones that are in my way. And it's kind of helpful sometimes to think this way when you're working. Uh, don't try to do everything at once. Don't say like, well, I need exactly this area cut out. Uh, to put X mesh in or put this in or, or feel free to drop something down and then later on you can always remove it if it's in the way later. The construction process is messy. Let it be messy. It'll lead to, uh, to a little bit more inspiration while you work. And we'll drop a couple of rocks in here. I'm trying to avoid putting the rocks on really uh, steep areas because if, the, if you do, and I think we'll, we'll be able to see this right here, you can see up underneath them just like the trees. So I'm just kind of adding them just for some overall flair, and that's about it. But I think that'll about do. Now, again, there's all kinds of different details you might want to paint in. Uh, you can bring, you know, your own FBX files in and then load them up here inside of Unity and paint them down. Now, that's not something we're going to be exploring here inside this series. But, I mean, if I was actually doing this and I was going to paint down some rock meshes, I wouldn't use a rock mesh that was open on the bottom just so that if I wanted to stick it into the side of a cliff or something, I could without being able to you know, see underneath and see through the thing like we're seeing here. But for purposes of demonstration, this really gets the point across. Though, that's really everything I needed to cover here. Lee, is there anything you'd like to add before we go? No, that's um, awesome. pretty good intro on it. Awesome. So uh, there's a quick look at painting down details, which is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.